Hello, dear colleagues. Uh, let's begin the course of zoology. As uh, you begin to uh, study as vets, you have to, to have a basic knowledge on uh, zoology, especially if uh, you want to practice as uh, veterinarians in some nature reserves or national parks also in uh, rehabilitation centers for wildlife. It will be uh, very uh, important for you to have uh, the basic knowledge on uh, general zoology. The zoology is a very, very uh, large discipline uh, consisted uh, of uh, two main uh, directions. One is the invertebrate zoology and the vertebrate zoology. Unfortunately, we have uh, very limited time here and uh, we will study only the basics. We only touch the ocean of uh, the zoology here. You can use, of course, not only these lectures, but um, as many other sources you can find in internet or in the library of the university. Here is one of uh, the examples. A little bit uh, about the history of zoology and some important uh, scientists. Carlos Linnaeus, a Swedish botanist, physician and zoologist, who laid the foundations for the modern biological naming scheme of binomial nomenclature. He is known as the father of modern taxonomy and is also considered one of the fathers of the modern ecology. Charles Darwin, English naturalist and geologist, best known for his contributions to evolutionary theory. He established that all species of life have descended over time from common ancestors. And in joint publication with Alfred Russell Wallace, Scottishmen studying the Indonesian fauna mainly in the jungles there introduced their scientific theory that this branching pattern of evolution resulted from a process that he called natural selection, in which the struggle for existence has a similar effect to the artificial selection involved in selective breeding. Of course, uh, Darwin and Wallace uh, just touch this uh, modern science now. The evolutionary theory on biology are uh, developed much more now in these present times and they study and the evolution on molecular level. So, um, uh, you know, many people uh, don't accept the, the theory of Darwin and Wallace, uh, but uh, they didn't dig enough into this science because, uh, of course, uh, Darwin said that if he had uh, one more life, he will rewrite his uh, theory. But it is the first idea for the evolutionary theory, which is now accepted even, as I said, and studied in molecular uh, level. So it's quite different. Uh, it's not just uh, fighting for survival, of course. And Sir Alfred Russell Wallace, he was a British naturalist, explorer, geographer, anthropologist, biologist, and illustrator. He is best known for independently conceiving the theory of evolution to natural selection. His paper on the subject was jointly published with some of uh, Charles Darwin's writings in uh, 1858. This uh, prompt Darwin published his own ideas in, on the origin of species. And one name which I cannot uh, miss, uh, one of uh, the persons uh, who inspired me when I was a young naturalist, I have a portrait of Gerald Darrell in my uh, office, in my house. Uh, maybe you are familiar with his books about his childhood uh, in Corfu Island in Greece called uh, My Family and Other Animals 
uh, the Garden of Gods and uh, and other. Also, he uh, has a lot of books uh, about his expeditions in the tropical areas, collecting rare animals, um, especially in Central Africa, Cameroon, and uh, South America, uh, in Argentina, uh, for example, and also um, one of the founders of the conservation of the wildlife in uh, captivity uh, and uh, he uh, during years created the so-called North Ark in the Jersey Island, an island uh, which is situated um, near the shores of France, but it's British, a small British island uh, with this uh, magical uh, zoo uh, where uh, rare species are bred and their uh, offspring is released back in the nature, in their habitats, uh, there, uh, from, uh, species from all over the world. And here in the slide is said that he founded the Daryl Wildlife Conservation Trust in the Jersey Zoo on the Channel Island of Jersey in 1959. His memoirs on uh, his family's years living in Greece, something which I said uh, already, were adapted into two television series. My Family and Other Animals, 1987, and the Darrells, uh, 2016 and 2019. And one television film, My Family and Other Animals, uh, 2005. He wrote approximately 40 books, mainly about his life uh, as an animal collector and enthusiast, the most famous being My Family and Other Animals. He was uh, the youngest brother of the novelist uh, Lawrence Darrell, uh, famous, again, famous uh, British writer. And Sir David Attenborough, Gerald Darrell's friend, he is an English broadcaster and natural historian. He is best known for writing and presenting in conjunction with the BBC Natural History Unit the nine natural history documentary series forming the life collection that together constitute a comprehensive survey of animal and plant life on Earth. One of also the founders of, of conservation of the nature and uh, uh, developing the evolutionary theory uh, as a modern science now. He is considered as a national treasure in the UK although he himself does not like the term. <laughs> Here is uh, with the Cape Coral water. Something about the hierarchy in classification of the organisms. Uh, something which, uh, as I said, uh, Carlos Linnaeus uh, had uh, the first idea. In the upper level, it's the life. After this is domain and the kingdom. Domain is consisted by kingdoms. Some scientists accept five kingdoms. One is the kingdom of the plants. Uh, the other is the kingdom of the animals. The other is the kingdom of the protozoans. So th these are single-celled organisms, but uh, they have a nucleus in their cells. And uh, uh, the, the fourth are the fungi, or fungi, uh, the kingdom of Mikota, these are the, the fungi. We uh, like to say uh, them uh, mushrooms, but mushrooms are uh, the fruit bodies of the true organisms which often lives inside a structure, uh, for example, inside the soil or inside a uh, uh, tree, rotten tree, or, or it can be leaf, uh, it can be parasitic species, for example. And the fifth kingdom is the um, kingdom of uh, the bacteria. Uh, these are organisms without uh, um, nucleus in uh, their uh, cytoplasm inside the cell. Um, the, their DNA uh, just uh, floating. <laughs> it's very roughly set, of course, uh, in the cytoplasm. The kingdoms are organized in films. The films are organized in classes. Classes are consisted of orders, and orders are consisted of families. Families have different genera, and the genera are consisted of species. 
That's why the particular species have two names. One is the genus name and the second one is specific species name. It is accepted the names of the organisms to be written in Latin. You know, the Latin is a dead language, but uh, it is used widely in the biology. And uh, this, the Latin name is the only name of a species. The other names are called common names. And each country and even each country parts have uh, different names for a particular species. But the only name is the Latin name of the Firstly, the protozoans. Protozoa, also protozoan, is an informal term for single-celled eukaryotes. So they have a nucleus, either free-living or parasitic, which feed on organic matter, such as other microorganisms or <coughs> organ, organic tissues and debris. Historically, the protozoa were regarded as one-celled animals because they often possess animal-like behaviors such as motility and predation and lack a cell wall as found in plants and many algae. Although the tra traditional practice of grouping protozoa with animals is no longer considered valid, the term continues to be used in a loose way to identify single-celled organisms that can move independently and feed by heterotrophy. In some systems of biological classification, protozoa is a high-level taxonomic group. When first introduced in 1818, protozoa was erected as a taxonomic class, but in later classification, schemes, it uh, was elevated to a variety of higher ranks, including film, subkingdom, and a kingdom. In a series of classifications proposed by Thomas Cavalier-Smith and his collaborators since uh, 1989, 1981, protozoa has been ranked as a kingdom. The seven kingdom scheme presented by Rogero et al. in uh, 2015 places eight fewer under kingdom protozoa, eugleonzoa and evozoa. Metamonada, Juanozoa, and the other names are erected. Notably, this kingdom excludes several major groups of organisms traditionally placed among the protozoa, including the ciliates, dinoflagellates, foraminiferas, and the parasitic apinocomplexans, all of which are classified under Kingdom Chromista. Kingdom Protozoa, as defined in this scheme, does not form a natural group of gate, but a paraphyletic group or evolutionary gate, with which the members of fungi, animalia and chromista are thought to have evolved. And there are various classification types. Uh, in our lecture course, we will accept a simple one, old one, and we'll study it. Uh, as uh, I mentioned, uh, for example, the flagellatus are something, uh, sometimes uh, they're uh, classified as plants because these are the only uh, eukaryotic single celled organisms which, which have chloroplasts in their cytoplasm and they can photosynthesize. So they can feed by the sun energy, like the plants and like the algae. Uh, on the other way, some can be parasitic, some flagellata can be parasitic and uh, feed uh, by uh, simple phagocytosis, uh, feeding smaller organisms, bacteria and food particles floating in water. They set a lot of classifications. We will accept one classification uh, and the, our aim is to have basic knowledge on, uh, on zoology, as I said. Uh, in your other courses, uh, which are called, for example, uh, parasitology, you will study the cell parasites and you, they, you will study them in detail 
and uh, uh, my colleagues from other uh, departments will explain you um, very uh, detailedly about uh, these parasitic single-celled uh, eukaryotic organisms. Thank you for attention for the very first lecture of zoology.